I kind of think of it as the piping now has cancer. Okay, Robert, so let's let's uh, get into the Type M, Type L copper a little bit more. Um, because, you know, the Type M tends to pit because it's a thinner pipe. So pitting means it's going to turn into a pinhole leak, correct? Yes. Go ahead and explain that a bit more. So, yeah, eventually... You know, because the Type M with the with the red stripe is a thinner copper, um, you're at a, a greater risk to eventually get a pinhole leak. Just on the inside of the pipe, the calcium deposits and things over time kind of can eat away at the pipe. And then more of a, definitely more of a serious issue is the improper strapping we find, you know, under under people's houses, yep. which put the, co- the copper in direct contact with galvanized steel so what we mean by that is and this we see this kind of all the time this is a a galvanized steel plumber's tape yep and a lot of times we'll see it you know hanging under the house and someone put a a galvanized strap on it and if you didn't know any better you would think what's the problem with that the problem is these are two dissimilar metals that (laughs) do not like each other and as soon as you put them in contact with each other, um, a process called electrolysis takes over, and the the two dissimilar metals will start to eat eat at each other and cause you know advanced corrosion you know to start, and the corrosion will will start to break down the copper pipe. It'll start to change color. It'll it'll darken, even turn black. Oh, you know what? I got a picture of that. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Yeah, we'll see, you know, real heavy corrosion and blackening of the pipe, and then leaks will start to develop. Okay, so this is what we're talking about. This is what a discolored pipe looks like, and this is a house that you and I were both under. Yes. About a month and a, maybe a month and a half ago. Uh, it's like, wow, is that black steel gas pipe? Nope. Right, no, that's that's a copper pipe that used to be a copper color, and then when the electrolysis takes over, it turns black like that. It gets very uh, thin and brittle, and you're at a, a much greater risk for, for a leak. It's almost, I can I kind of think of it as the piping now has cancer. You know, it just okay, kind of yeah. s- spreads throughout the system, and yep. it's going to fail for sure. Yep. And um, let's see. Got another shot here. So right here, this is, they actually have a decent strap on this one. That's the... Uh, plastic yeah, one that's you a, have that's a plastic version which is which is good it's not going to cause any corrosion right. or anything it's not there's no metal in that so there's no dissimilar metal issue but look how black that pipe is right so so when i see it like that i know somewhere in the system it's got to be in contact with galvanized right. and uh another thing that con that i've noticed that causes that even uh well i can't confirm this but i would assume even the older homes with the uh with the metal uh, conduit for electrical, oh, where they uh, they ground it. What is it? Where, no, no, where it's where it's laying on the pipe. Oh, just in contact. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I see that. So that there could be another cause yeah, of it. That's a big one. Electrical. Yeah, the electrical metal electrical yep. conduit laying on the on the copper. Okay, let me see. I gotta see right here. And then also the laying right on the copper. The the hangers, that's un right unprotected. Uh, pipe right. hangers so that's um another big thing we see is they they make these steel hangers which are designed to be hammered into the wood under the house and then the piping is is rested in the hanger like this to support it underneath now they thought about this by incorporating this this black protection so like there's rubber a it looks black like black rubber yeah so there is a barrier between you know the the dissimilar metals but over time rubbing just friction from the water running through the pipe it'll break down this black barrier and then now you're going to have two dissimilar metals touching each other yeah. so the best way to do it is this is called plumber's felt so you put a piece of felt over the copper pipe first and then you install the hanger so that you have an added layer of protection and when you have it set like that under the house that's gonna 
basically outlasts everyone's lifetime. So that's good. that's probably your signature. So if I go into a house and I see that, I know Robert was there. Yeah, this is definitely the <laughs> the best way to do it for long term sure. to, to protect the copper. Nice. And that's the difference, people, uh, between hiring a professional and a hack. Right. You know, a hack is just going to throw that stuff in. Minimal supports. I mean, I I I can't I can't I can honestly say I don't typically see great support on drain or water supply pipe on remodels uh, there's like minimal supports right and on a copper pipe according to code is there a, a specific distance between each hanger every six feet every on copper on, on, on copper. supply on supply pipe? yeah on water yeah on copper uh, every six feet yes. and on drain pipe it's what is it four feet it's every four feet yeah, yeah. On the okay so there is a you know a standard that all these plumbers should be following and most don't Yes. Most of the stuff I see is is just not right. So my point on this photo, once again, was this uh, electrical uh, conduit uh, inside that 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 silver uh, corrugated uh, metal right there right, is, is wiring for the house. Yeah, right up against the... Yeah, and you can see all the corrosion right at that joint. So that could be caused by that. It's hard to say. But as Robert pointed out, there's, there's hangers with no rubber on that hanger either. Yeah, exactly. No protection on those hangers. Right. Um, yeah, and the then, felt is the best, but if you could at least have, they make 10 mil tape then right there. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a big no, no. Yeah. And all you need is one spot in the system in contact with galvanized like that. And it can ruin everything. So yep. it's, it's people think that, oh, it's just going to affect the pipe in that area. But no, it, it, the electrolysis travels, you know, like right. cancer through the system and it could, right. you want to hand me that piece of galvanized there? Oh, uh, here we, now this here. This pipe here is typically what's been upgraded. So this was in the house. This is what years would you say that we typically find this? It, in the homes built in the fifties, I would say most common. Most fifties before and even a little after, I would yeah. say there's 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 going to be galvanized. Yeah, I think it goes a bit higher than that. I think I would say. Uh, it's, it's Maybe kind of, late sixties. Yeah, I, I've seen it. I've, pretty, I've seen it in some seventies houses too, where it's been upgraded. Okay. So I think it's gone. I think it's it's stretched out pretty far on that. Um, but anyway, if you go see inside the end of the pipe, that's all rust and corrosion buildup. So these pipes, what they do is they corrode from the inside, yes. and they just fill up with rust. So this was once a long time ago a three quarter inch pipe, and now it's probably the size of a half inch on the inside, right, or yes. less. So you can see inside here too. But anyway, um, so this is galvanized steel. How do we know? Well, put a magnet on it. I forgot to bring one up to the uh, podcast here. But this is, if I see this painted, I can't tell what it is. Knocking on it's not going to tell me. Uh, sure, I could scratch it with my screwdriver, I guess. Uh, but I just carry a magnet with me. Actually, you know what? I do have my magnet right here. Uh, okay. This is how I do it. <laughs> I grab one of these, and bam! There you go. So if I have any, any like, hmm, I'm not sure. If I'm scratching my head, going, "What kind of pipe is that?" Because a lot of times, pipes sticking out of the wall of a house are painted, right? And you may see copper right here, and like, oh, wait, yeah, but that pipe looks a little different. These types of elbows will also give it away. Right, good, and you see a little bit of thread at the you end. See a little bit of thread. You see these uh, elbows right here. So there's a lot of indicators, but if you're a new home inspector, this can trick you if it's painted. So carry one of these. They sell these at Home Depot. You have a whole box of them, uh, and just keep them. Keep one in your pocket, or I keep, I keep mine in my camera bag, so it's handy. Because um, I might be in an attic. Same thing. Uh, sometimes I just I can't tell because something's discolored, and I just I don't like guessing. I don't, I, this is not a right. guessing game when you're inspecting a house. You just want to get as many facts as you can. So this is my way of telling. This is not going to stick to that. Right. It sticks to this plumber's tape. So that's how you can tell, guys. Um, but anyway, this is what was in a lot of houses, older homes. And this was removed to put either this or this in place. 
Now, the reason why I want to get into this is because a lot of times this is left under the house. They don't cut it out. It's still hanging there. Right. And then they take one of these and they go like this. Right. Or they go like this. I see it all the time. And this is why these pipes are getting discolored and pitted and corroded is because there's too much contact with the similar metals. Right. So this is a daily thing for me to find. I, I, I could literally see this four times a week. Yeah, I, I see it all the time too. Under a modeled house. So um, if you're having your house repiped, tell your plumber to remove all of your old galvanized. Tell them to get rid of it. If you have to pay extra, it's worth it. Just tell them to cut it out and throw it away. Yeah. It's real easy to cut. I just cut this. I just cut a piece of this this morning with a, a sawzall and a hack and a, and a metal blade. I was through that in less than 30 seconds. Right. So it's real easy to do. Um, any, any other tips you want to tell people about this stuff? Um, you know, I think you kind of, you know, hit everything. It's, it's kind of in an older home. The first thing in the plumbing system to go out is, is, is the original galvanized water piping. Yep. And it's the first thing we'll see go out and then, you know, it'll have to be updated with either copper or PEX. Right. And I would say probably most of them have probably already been updated now that we're in 2022 and they, you know, it came out, it was primarily installed, you know, the seventies and prior. Yep. So we see some sometimes, but, um, but yeah, that definitely the, the galvanized water lines there, if there's any out there still, they're, they're definitely at the end of their service life span. Yeah. And I just thought of another problem I find with this stuff. So in some houses, we'll see what's called cross connections. So they'll connect new copper yes. to, to this existing galvanized because they were only doing what's called spot repairs. So what that means is only a small section, or maybe it was a large section, of the galvanized failed. And then the plumber gave the homeowner the price to repipe the house, and they said, what? And they said, right. you know what? Well, why don't you just fix that one spot for now? Right. And then if it was an inexperienced plumber or just a hack, then he would just connect these directly together. And guess what? What does that cause? We just talked about that. Electrolysis. Same as here. If it's sitting on top of it, it's going to have the same effect as being attached to it. Yes. So the what I typically see when this is done, if it's done correctly, is a piece of brass in between them. Yes, it's supposed to be a, a six-inch brass nipple yeah. of separation is the best so, way to do it. So that's interesting because you got galvanized here, then you got brass, then you get copper. So for some reason, brass is the is the the uh, mediator. Exactly. <laughs> the, for some, for whatever reason, the the brass it stops the electrolysis from traveling through and and that's interesting. rotting away the copper. I wonder how they figured that out. Yeah, she's. <laughs> That's anybody know about that? Call me. <laughs> I'm going to have you as a guest because I'd like to know how they eventually figured that out. So that's a common thing that's called a cross connection. Uh, if you're getting a home inspected, you may, your home inspector may report, oh, there's cross connections. So that what it, that's what it means. It means you still have galvanized pipe in service and it's connected to a new piece of copper. Um, that's not going to be a case with PEX. Right. It's just plastic. But I don't think I've seen... PEX connected to this. Can, is that possible? It's possible to do it. They make adapters where they you can do. go from, okay. from yeah, thre uh, threaded pipe. Yeah, to I don't it. think I've seen that yet. Okay. Okay, but I'll look for it. Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> seeing it either. Yeah. Cool. All right. So uh, going back to the hangers, you got some examples of what you you use. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a variety of, of plastic hangers you can use, um, you know, in a wall or under the house. Um, we call this a Mickey Mouse hanger because it looks like Mickey Mouse <laughs> a little bit with the ears. So that'll, you know, that's a good way to, you know, hang the pipe under the house. And it's just plastic, so there's not going to be any uh, electrolysis happening. Um, and then there's also just different hangers. This is, we call this an isolator. We can drill a, a hole through like a wood stud and then put this in the hole. Right. And then feed the pipe through. It gives it a real good bracing, maybe coming through the floor. Or, oh, you know, or through a stud. Sure. Um, so, yeah, those are, you just, once you start using steel hangers, you want to be really careful protecting the pipe with additional protection. Um, felt is, is kind of the best, but they also make a, a plumber's tape, a 10 mil or 20 mil plumber's tape, wrap it around a couple of times, and at least you did that for an added uh, Yeah, I do, I do see that. I, now that you bring that up, I do remember seeing that where uh, 
copper was right below this galvanized, and they actually put a separator in between the two of them. Right. And I could just chop that piece out and just been done with it. I just don't, I don't understand the laziness going on today. Right. To me, it's just laziness. And these are decent sized crawl spaces where you can get around. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's not like it's hard. Looking to save a couple minutes here or there. Yeah. Uh, and the one, and the one thing too, I want to mention to, uh, uh, home inspectors for sure is when you're looking at copper, it's not always turned in the direction where you can read the label. Right. So if you're under a house and you're on your back and you're looking up, uh, what kind of pipe is that? And you can't see any color to it. There's no tag on it. Then you have to make a note, unable to determine type of copper. You don't want to leave there without identifying it. So if you can't identify it, you want to say it could not determine it because, you know, you just can't see the label. Right. There's, there's no other, you're not going to be able to tell if it's L or if it's L or uh, M unless you can see the color or a specific label on it. Right. So I see that a lot. I cannot, I cannot identify pipe because I just do not see a label. It's just the way it was in or the pipe was just poorly labeled. Right. I'm sure that happens too. It's not always stamped correctly. Yeah. It, it could definitely happen. So, okay. Any other thing you want to talk about with the clamps or any, uh, um, no, I just think, uh, yeah, overall, yeah, the, the, the type L copper with the blue is the higher quality, less likely to get pinhole leaks, and much more rigid, uh, longer lasting. And the type M with the red is just the, the thinner material, um, which could be more susceptible to pitting and leaks and things like that. Right. So just to kind of sum that up. So I, I recently just did a house um, in, God, where was that? It was in Palmdale. A uh, pretty big house. Uh, in it, I did find type M copper in several areas. So it just made me believe the whole house had type M. Right. And I found a really, really hard leak to find just by using my thermal gun, just in a courtesy scan with my thermal imaging gun, which is what I typically do at on a second story house on the ceilings. If there's any bathrooms above or, you know, it could be some kind of a pipe leak. And I found uh, type M copper. It's somebody made a hole below the way the leak was, and somebody knew it was leaking. Right. And they made a hole, and they just didn't. They just never opened it up to fix it. It was in the garage, and you could see. I could see the stamp on it, clear as day, the red stamp, and then right next to it, I could see a bunch of pitting, and then on the on the other side of that, it was dripping. So yeah. it was le actively leaking in the house, and I found two different spots that were actually leaking. Right. So I've actually witnessed it. Yeah, you've witnessed that it, it wears out faster. Yeah. One, there's another thing I want to point out too is pinhole leaks are so noisy, aren't they? Um, you know, not, no. really. <laughs> not really. Yeah, they can be real quiet and... Um, uh, yeah, pinhole leaks. I've had some experience with pinhole leaks. I've literally walked up to a water heater before. And I'm just taking my pictures, hitting with my flashlight, just doing my thing, documenting the tank, the size, and just basically inspecting it. It took me about five minutes to realize that this pipe above the water heater was actually leaking. Oh, I see. It was a pinhole, and it was spraying in the opposite direction. And you can't hear it. It does not make a noise. Not, right. not the ones I've seen. Yeah. It does not make a noise. And then as I finally caught on to, I'm like, I saw a little moisture on the ground. I'm like, where's that coming from? And I really had to look to find this pinhole. It had to be so tiny. And, and uh, it, was spraying, it was spraying a wall, like further to my right. I'm, trying, I'm, looking, I'm, looking, in, oops, I'm looking in this direction. And this pinhole was way over here, kind of at the side of the pipe. And it was going that way. Yeah. So I was not getting hit with any type of water. I wasn't getting any spray. And it was really interesting to find, like, holy shit. I could have easily walked away from that and not even known that was there. If I right. didn't scope the other side of it. I'm just saying it's it's really quiet. And I found another one. Uh, I found another one in a house. And what caught my eye first was on the right side of the water heater, all I could see was mold. This is in someone's garage. And their washer and dryer was over here on the left. Water heater was here. And then there was a gap between the water heater and, and the exterior wall of the garage. And I'm like, why is that all black? I'm like, why is that, why is that wall black? And I'm like, holy shit, that's mold. It was everywhere. And I'm like, interesting. 
And then I started noticing a little bit of moisture. And then I looked up, and once again, a pinhole. You could not hear that pinhole at all. Right. I grabbed the homeowner who was actually living there, who was still, still at the house. I said, did you not notice this? Oh, yeah, we noticed that a couple months ago. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, and the a hot water leak can really, you know, accelerate the growth of, of the mold a lot faster than cold water. Oh, That's one thing I learned okay. from the water damage guys. When there's a hot water leak, it's a lot worse than okay. versus cold water. Interesting. Yeah, for some reason, the, the, the mold just grows way faster with the, the added temperature. I've never heard that. I'm going to have to have to call my boy in the mold department, <laughs> see what he says about that. Yeah, I never heard that before. Uh, interesting. And then um, I was under a house, uh, big, tall crawl space, easy to get around, a uh, much older home, like 1920s or something. And I saw some water. I'm like, why is there water over there? I don't see anything leaking. I had to get right under this pinhole to see it. You could not see the mist, anything. It was barely, barely noticeable. And I had my glasses on. <laughs> so, right. so I'm like, I know I can see, you know? And I was like, wow. So pinholes are, they're not loud. They're not noisy. And they're not going to uh, give you a warning when they start. Right. And then, yeah, long term, it can be, you know, a tremendous amount of damage caused by, especially on a hot water line. Exactly. Um, so yeah, very important to just slow down and kind of take a look at everything. Don't be in such a hurry. Yeah. Um, so to sum it all up, it all starts with the regulator. Yeah, it all starts with the regulator protecting the whole house. Um, you know, keeping the pressure down is going to go a long way. Um, and then making sure your copper, you know, under the house or wherever you can see it doesn't have, you know, isn't in contact with galvanized. Yeah. And you know, make sure there's not like old, old galvanized under the house too. And like you said, sometimes they, they do half and half. I see that a lot where they'll just do, they'll do copper underneath the house where it's accessible, but they didn't want to demo the walls or demo the shower. Yep. So they left the risers galvanized steel. Yep. This will be, this will be in the walls for the yeah, showers. Exactly. They never changed those uh, out. So they're probably due to be changed yeah. out i do catch that a lot in a crawl space because i can see where that connection is most of the time when i'm in a crawl space if there is a crawl space uh, i i do call that out quite a bit where i'll see the, the vertical runs inside going up and i'm like yeah they 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 upgraded your they upgraded your water supply pipe but only probably 90 percent of it right you still get stuff in the walls and that's only because the homeowner didn't want to demo the bathroom um, like sometimes there's a shower and the shower head typically has this still in place. Right. And then, um, there may not be an accessible wall on the other side. Right. They could be back to back shower and yeah, tub yeah. where it would have to be some serious demolition to. Yeah. We're talking, we're talking, taking demo and all your tile out of your shower. It's, it's a big job. So that's why a lot of people just choose not to do that. And that's why. A lot of times it's in the home inspection report that it's only partially done. Right. Because eventually it will have to be done. They just didn't do it then. Right. So. Right. 